My name is Edward Thompson. I'm a program manager for Microsoft Visual Studio Team Services, and I focus on Git and version control. I'd like to introduce you to the Git version control system. In this video, I'll explain how Git works and how it's different from the traditional version control systems that you might be familiar with using. I'll show you Git within Visual Studio Team Services, and I'll demonstrate a standard Git workflow using Visual Studio and VSTS. And I'll demonstrate one of Git's most powerful features, a technology called pull requests that enable code review from your team and help enforce best practices. But first, I should explain why Git has become the most popular version control system on the market. And that stems from how Git is different than a traditional version control system like Team Foundation version control or Subversion. Those traditional version control systems are called centralized version control systems. You talk to a central server whenever you want to work with your source code. If you want to create a branch, you need to ask the server to create one for you. If you want to merge your changes with a coworkers, you need to ask the server to do that for you. In some configurations, you may have to ask the server if you even want to start editing a file. Now, there are some benefits to these sorts of centralized systems, but fundamentally, they slow down the development process. So in our constant effort to build software more efficiently, a different type of version control system, like Git, starts to look very appealing. Git is what's called a distributed version control system. And that means that it doesn't rely on a central server to operate. Instead, every developer has a full copy of the repository on their local computers that they can work on. This means that you can make changes locally and even commit those changes locally. You can create a new branch locally to work in. And in fact, with Git, you're encouraged to. You don't need to be an administrator to create a branch. And it's incredibly fast and efficient. So you can create a quick branch just to fix a bug or to work on a new feature. Now, just because Git doesn't require a central server to operate doesn't mean that you shouldn't have one. We're not going back to the bad old days of software development before version control, where you were never really sure which was the latest version of a file, and you did the release build on a developer's workstation. Having a central server is still a best practice. It's the single source of truth for your software. And Visual Studio Team Services is that central server for hosting Git repositories within your organization. Let's take a look at Git in VSTS. Here I have a simple c -sharp project hosted in a Git repository inside Visual Studio Team Services. And I can navigate through my project's structure within VSTS. I can navigate through and see the files as they exist in my repository. I can even click on a file and view the contents of the file as it exists in the latest version. I can even edit this file within VSTS. This is using the same rich text editor that's included within Visual Studio Code. So I get syntax highlighting and great editing. I don't just get to see the structure of the repository. I can also look at the history. If I come to the Commits tab, I can view how my repository has changed over time. The Pushes tab lets me see who has uploaded changes and when into this repository. And finally, the Branches tab lets me look at the structure of my repository, the different branches. I've got my main integration branch, master, as well as other branches that exist on the server. Now, of course, it's great that Visual Studio Team Services has this rich web user interface. But most of us don't do our code editing in the web. We do it inside a text editor or an IDE. That's one of the things that makes using Git so powerful. Its popularity means that it's integrated into almost every text editor, including VS Code, and every IDE, including Visual Studio. Let's take a look at Git in Visual Studio talking to VSTS. So here I am within Visual Studio, and I'm connected to Visual Studio Team Services. And once I've done that, I get a list of my projects and my repositories right within the Team Explorer. So I can find my repository, and I can right click and say clone. That will bring the repository down to my machine. Once the clone is finished, I can just double click on a repository to open it in Team Explorer. 
And then I can open the same repository in Solution Explorer. Now I can work on my project with the rich Git editing experiences that Visual Studio offers. I can make a change to a file, like add this comment, and save it. And when I navigate to Team Explorer and go to the Changes tab, you can see that Git noticed that that file had changed and added it to the Changes list automatically. Now, again, one of the most powerful parts of Git is its lightweight branching functionality. So when I make this change, what I actually want to do is commit it on a new branch. And I can get started with that even though I've already started working on my files. I need to go to the Team Explorer homepage, click on Branches, and then say New Branch. When I click Create Branch, I'll have my new changes moved over right onto this branch. So when I go back to the Team Explorer Changes page, I can update a commit message and click Commit. And now my changes have been updated on my new branch. Finally, I can push these changes back to Visual Studio Team Services. I can click the Sync button right from within the Changes page, and then click Push to send my changes up to the server. So now if I navigate back to Visual Studio Team Services and click Reload on the Branches page, we'll see my new Add Comment branch. Once we have a branch pushed up to Visual Studio Team Services that contains our code, we're able to use a powerful technology called pull requests to enable code review and enforce best practices. Let's take a very quick look at how to merge our changes into the master branch using pull requests in VSTS. So from within Visual Studio Team Services, I can navigate to my new branch, I can drop down and create new pull request. This pull request is what allows other team members to look at my changes. If I scroll down, you're able to see all of the changes that I made within my branch. Other team members can come in and add comments to this. They can comment on either the individual lines of code or, more generally, on the changes that I'm making. I can add a comment to the pull request to provide a description and click Create. And my team members will be notified that there's a new pull request for their attention and code review. This is a very powerful way to get both code reviews and branch policies. So that was a very brief look at pull requests. You can learn more about pull requests in other Connect On Demand videos. And if you'd like to learn more about Git in Visual Studio Team Services, please visit visualstudio.com slash learn git. To read more about code review with pull requests, visit aka.ms slash code review. And to learn more about how you can use pull requests to enable branch policies, visit aka.ms slash branch policies. And be sure to follow us on Twitter. Thanks for watching.